Hello and welcome back to the channel, Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe. And also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to continue seeing more. Coming up in this episode, Andrew Voss speaks critically about the Samoan media blackout. A leopard declines the storm to become a devil. And transfer rumours. Our Saints target appears to have declined offer. Rugby League World Cup commentator, as well as Fox NRL Sports uh, commentator Andrew Voss, has tweeted that some more Rugby League team and staff will speak to the media ahead of the Saturday semi-final against England. Reports in various publications earlier in the day stated that Samoa's coach Matt Parrish and his players would not be involved in themselves in media duties this week to focus on the game at the Emirates Stadium next Saturday. Samoa lost their opening uh, World Cup game 60 points to 6 to England and since then head coach Matt Parrish has been unhappy with the media treatment of his team despite his team winning every game since to set up a rematch with the host for a place in the final. Boss then tweeted angrily in the beginning of the day, media bans in rugby league are a crock of S-word. At Rugby League World Cup 2021, seriously, do your job. It's not life or death, it is sport. Sport attracts opinions all day, every day, and you can Take the good with the bad. If it's offensive material, you elite or block. At BBC Sport, at Bossy Brandy S E N. He continued, further to my view on Media Ban, let me tell you that the Samoa squad has some of the best personalities in the NRL. Talented yet humble men who are great to deal with. Luai, Toto, Crichton, Papali'i, etc. I hope the coach changes his stance. Nothing but good will be achieved as a result. The efforts and countless hours of work of the Rugby League World Cup 2021 staff is to be admired. They want to the best for the sport and it has a window to get out so many good league related stories. Controversy is also a story. An engagement on positive and negative is all part of the deal. It's as though it looks like that cooler heads have prevailed. As Vossi completed his day's rant, to be fair, with a message around about 5 p.m. Monday in the UK. So he said, I'm being told the best interests of our Samoa and the Rugby League World Cup 2021 will be served and the team will be available to the media, which in turn is actually speaking to the fans. They have so many good personalities and much to celebrate in reaching the semi-final for the first time. Hope this remains the case. I'm so glad that cooler heads have prevailed in this instance. And we can go into the Rugby League World Cup finding uh, semi-finals with Samoa facing England at the uh, Arsenal's Emirates Stadium on Saturday, 2.30 p.m. Granite Me Means Time, so that both teams can be available to express their excitement or their trepidation in going to such a place. Here in 43,000 tickets so I've already been sold for the event for the 60,000 all-seater venue. So it's going to be one of those be there or miss out sort of scenarios. Hope this is the end to any media um, blockages for any team in the World Cup. As Vossi can then go and continue with his V ratings when it comes to his food exploration of the UK. There have been some four Vs out of five. Let's hope he gets a five out of five. Monday evening saw a couple of Rugby League World Cup games in the wheelchair side of the draw. As France with world number ones and favourite for the World Cup came up 
Town and won 80 points to 15 over Scotland. Nicola Clotel was the player of the game as he racked up four tries for the French with the gritty Scottish side who came to biff, bang and bump the French team out of their stride. Unfortunately for Scotland, the French team are just too good. And the Clausels and a couple of hat tricks from other players, they went on to win 80 points to 15 against the Scots. In the second game at the EIS State uh, Arena in Sheffield, it was Wales who came from behind to beat the USA 50 points to 32. Most of Wales' points coming in the second half. It was 30 points to 22 at half time and USA were doing really really well with Jeff Townsend scoring 4 tries for the US team. Tries from all over the place from Wales as in the picture Scott Trigger Turner scored one of the memorable tries, a good little dummy and playing it on when he wasn't tackled to abuse the USA defence who had thought the tackle had been complete so that he could go over the try line. Man of the match was Sean Williams uh, for Wales, but with Townsend's four tries, he was in with the shout. USA could have went through to the semi-finals with victory over Wales, now have to face a mammoth task against France to go through. Wales, however, face Scotland in the next round of games. Either of them win by a decent enough point score, that could mean that they go through to the semi-finals. Next we move on to the Southern Red Devils as they have announced the signing of a player that has been reportedly attracting the attention of teams in the NRL like the Melbourne Storm. Salford say they are delighted to announce Sam Stone has signed for Salford Red Devils on a two-year contract from Lee Leopards. The 25-year-old was born in Queensland, Australia and represented two clubs in the NRL, the Newcastle Knights and the Gold Coast Titans, before deciding to join Lee a couple of years ago and then join Salford, with this being the first picture that we see of them, devoid of Flash. Across the 2022 season, Stone made 28 appearances in the Betfred Championship, scoring 8 tries and played a major role in the Lee Leopards' promotion to the Betfred Super League. He operates in the second row and will add quality to uh, already established players in that area. Callum Watkins was the shining light of the Southern Red Devils last season, but Stone joins Andrew Dixon as two new signings that will add quality and depth to Paul Rowley's squad. Stoffords head coach announced the signing and made a comment on Stone's acquisition by saying, On behalf of all the players in the stand, I'm delighted to welcome Sam to Salford. I've admired Sam's work ethic and attitude from the moment he came over to England and these attributes are, were very evident in his performances throughout last season. Kurt has worked with Sam and has always been very complimentary in his admir admiration of him. A player with his worth ethic and character is exactly the type of player we want in our group. Salford's Director of Rugby Operations, Ian Blees, added it's really exciting that Sam has joined the Salford Red Devils to begin his Super League journey. He's a young player we're really excited to develop and we know he'll fit into an already highly skilled group seamlessly. Under, co under the coaching of Paul and Kurt, we've already seen various players improve tremendously over the last 12 months and we can hope he can join that long list during 2023. As well as Stone coming across, Christian Inu follows over as their former winger is back at the club for his first off the field role as assistant coach. 
The 35-year-old will work closely with Paul Rowley and Kurt Haggerty to manage and develop a playing squad already packed with talent. Inu brings years of playing experience from both sides of the world and no doubt will be a huge beneficiary to a mixture of established names and younger talent. Speaking on his return to the club, I'm excited to be coming home and joining the staff in a role I wasn't expecting to come into. I'm grateful and proud to be helping the team reach their goals and get them to where they deserve to be. And that is in the top six. I can't wait for the challenges ahead and I'm looking forward to what the next few years and seasons bring. During his three years stay with the Sulphur Red Devils at the AJ Bell Stadium, Inu made 53 club appearances, scoring 24 tries and converting 195 goals. His trusty right boot was involved in so many memorable moments, including the 2019 Betfred Super League Grand Final and the 2020 Challenge Cup Final. His early career in the NRL was with Parramatta Eels for three years, a year with the New Zealand, two years with the New Zealand Warriors, and three years with the Canterbury Bulldogs before he moved to the Northern Hemisphere, where he signed for the Catalan Dragons before a move over to Windus Vikings, and then his move to Salford saw him close out his Super League career and moved to FC Lesignon in France for six games where he scored one try. That same year to 2022, last year, well this year, he moved to Lee Centurions where he had an impressive run. 23 games, 25 tries and 159 goals in that short period. This comes off the back of a 2022 campaign which was successful with Lee Centurions but Inu has decided to hang his rugby boots up at the end of this year, of last year, should I say, and now goes into a new role that he clearly wasn't expecting, but will be grateful to take it. On the announcement of Inu joining the club, uh, his head coach Paul Rowley said, It's really pleasing that Chris has decided to join us on the coaching staff. His knowledge of the game is first class and he's respected throughout the game on both sides of the world. Chris has had a fantastic playing career and made a positive impact at each club he's representative. Represented, even. One of those, of course, being Salford. With that in mind, I not only welcome an intelligent and experienced rugby guy, but more importantly, a trusty friend who I'm looking forward to helping him on his next phase of his rugby journey. So we now go on to the rumour bin, as a few teams have been linked with players from all different sides of the codes, uh, sides and codes, like St. Helens, as it has been revealed that St. Helens will not be signing former Castleford and Sales Sharks winger Denny Solomona after reports emerged that the Super League champions made a shock swoop for the former Castleford Tigers for, uh, speedster. Solomona, who broke the Super League record for tries scored in a single season, is currently playing New Zealand in New Zealand with North Harbour. It was reported by the rugby paper that Solomona has said no to a return to the 13-man game and Super League, despite interest from the champions. The Saints have been on the lookout for a winger following the departure of Regan Grace to Rugby Union and Rugby League Live understands Saints did make some tentative inquiries around Solomona, though their interest never went further than that. Not only would the England Rugby Union International require a quota spot, something the Saints don't currently occupy, but his wage demands meant discussions were never going to went into great deal. Or detail. Now 29 years old, Solomona, who has scored a staggering 40 tries in one season for Castleford, before retiring from the 13-man game to pursue a deal with Sales Sharks in Union. 
he there went on to play six seasons with the Sharks and played five times for England during his career. Any potential return to rugby league would be a major talking point given the controversial details surrounding his exit from Castleford. He has though however played for Melbourne Storm and London Broncos before he moved on to the Union. Saints are expected to sign a replacement for Grace with Barrows T. Ritson, strongly linked with a move to the club. Moving across the postcode now, Warrington Wolves are reportedly closing in on Catalan's Australian star, Josh Drinkwater, as head coach Daryl Powell seeks a Gareth Widdup replacement, and the French club are trying to ease their salary cap pressure. Widdup, who partnered Williams last year, was allowed to switch to Castleford, while fullback Stefan Ratchford can play in the halves. The only other specialists are rel relatively inexperienced Riley Dean and 18-year-old Leon Hayes, who made his senior debut this year. Williams, in the absence of resting fullback, skippered England in their group game against Greece, and was the highest profile siding Warrington had after the leaving he left Canberra Raiders midway through the 2021 season. Drinkwater has a year to run on his contract at Catalans, where he is in his second spell, having played for Hull KR in 2019. The Sydney Sider came through the Manly Sea Eagles development system before making his NRL debut in 2013 after a move to St George Illawarra Dragons. Having made four appearances in total, he spent 2014 at the London Broncos before he returned back down under with West Tigers. When that failed to work out, he was released halfway through to join Lee, who he helped win promotion for the from the championship in 2016 and remained in the Super League the following Super League season after Lee's relegation. Had a short spell at North's uh, New South Wales Cup team Western Suburb Magpies afterwards before beginning his first spell at Catalans in 2018. During that time he was a Challenge Cup winner against Warrington in the final with the French side that year and featuring in the grand final defeat against St. Helens in 2021. Warrington have an overseas quarter spot available as well as wiggle room in the salary cap after second rower Oliver Holmes switched to Lee. And the biggest hint of them all came when Warrington released their squad numbers for 2023 and there's no number 7 yet. Which can mean that they have found a halfback or have yet to find one that meets their needs. And finally, though most Super League clubs have spent up to their cap and have a few or no quarters spot, quarter spots left available, you get the feeling that the drama of the off-season is still only just beginning. With whispers of a transfer merry-go-round round set to begin, another rumour started last week when it was thought that Braden Villiarmi is on his way back to Super League. Billy Arby started his career at Parramatta Eels before a spell at the Manly Sea Eagles, and in 2017 he made the move to Catlands Dragons and helped them fend off relegation as they slipped into the million pound game against Lee. He also played in the Catlands Dragons Challenge Cup final victory in 2018 before leaving the club at the end of the 2019 season to join the St George Illawarra Dragons. After two seasons with the Dragons, Villiarmi left Rugby League to take up an opportunity with Rugby Union Club USA Perpignan in France. However, rumours have started circulating that Villiarmi could be set to join Leeds Rhinos in 2023 as they look for a centre following the departures of Zach Hardacre and Liam Sutcliffe. Serious about Rugby League understands that Villy Army will be headed to Super League in 2023, having signed a deal with a club in the top division of the Northern Hemisphere. However, the club remains unclear, though the deal is said to have been tabled a month or so ago. 
Leeds could be very well the team in question with the Rhinos needing the centre ahead of the 2020 season. However, the Rhinos have used all their quota spots for 2023 and at this present moment, which means that one of the current overseas stars would have to leave to create space for Viliami, who is a Fijian international. Furthermore, the fact the deal was offered a month ago may shed further doubt on Leeds being the club in question, due to the fact that a month ago, they were still hoping to keep in hold of Zach Hardacre. So, perhaps a more likely destination is his former club, Catalan's Dragons, who have been open about looking for a new centre after letting Samisoni Lange and Dean Ware go for the 2023 season. They also lost out on the race to Ricky Lutelli and could look to someone they know can do a job in Viliami for the next year. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking on that notification bell for any updates or new videos that may be coming your way in the near future. Tell me what your thoughts are on today's episode in the comment section below. Uh, Salford signing Sam Stone. S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S. So many S's. What do you think, Salford fans? Is that a good signing? Um... Do you think Kristen Inu joining the staff is also a good option? USA fans, how unlucky were the te wheelchair team? Or did they just have to come up and play too? They needed a bit more energy in them, uh, but they had the skill and the speed in the side. Could they have done better? Fortunately, not at this time. And have a mammoth task against France. Anyway. I'll let you tell me what your thoughts are in the episode in the comment section below. When in the meantime, please stay safe. Please remember to share this, share, share this video worldwide. I'll end the episode as I always do. Wishing you all the best. And I'll see you in the next one.